Hello everybody and welcome to TJ's Lego Room and today I'm going to do something fun. So uh, I got my 501st Battle Packs in the mail which I'm super excited about and I thought I would do a puzzle build for you guys. I'm actually recording this early because I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to have any time this next week since it is uh, Christmas coming up and that is the holiday that my family celebrates. So I thought it uh, might work out if I went ahead and recorded the puzzle build for this and uh, just went ahead and uploaded it. So if you're seeing this the day after Christmas, you know I didn't have enough time to do anything else. Uh, if you're not seeing it then, then uh, you know, hey, uh, we got the video we got. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in, shall we? So tonight I actually just watched the season finale of The Mandalorian season two. And oh my goodness, it was insane. Uh, it was just crazy. So uh, if you guys have seen it, I hope you uh, enjoyed it as much as I did for sure. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'm very sorry, but uh, there's not much I can do to help you. <laughs> I hope you get to watch it sometime. All right, so here's the instruction booklet. We're going to toss that away. The 501st Battle Pack has uh, just under 300 pieces. We've got 285 pieces. Uh, oh, sorry, it's not the Battle Pack. It's the 501st Legion Clone Troopers. Now, uh, I, I did get quite a few of these sets. The original idea was that I was going to uh, get enough so I could have a squadron of four different guys. But then I've kind of gone back and forth about whether I'm going to save a couple of these sets to... Uh, as an investment, or if I'm just going to go ahead and build them. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. So far, I haven't uh, been too lucky as far as the investment side of LEGO. All the stuff I end up getting multiples of doesn't seem to last very long as far as uh, as money goes. All right, so we're going to open this guy up. Looks like I can spot two clone troopers. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. Looks like we got both of our battle droids here, so that's awesome. I'm not seeing a jetpack, so these might just be regular 501st clones. I gotta say, I love the new uh, Django Fett head. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Oh, these clone troopers are gorgeous. I wonder how different they are from the, uh, from the other ones. Let's see if we can find our other 501st clone trooper. All right. Oh, wow. The, uh, oh man, the printing on this one is terrible. I think I got a bad one, guys. Wow, the printing on these legs is so pixelated. That's horrible. I, I like different aspects of these two different guys. Uh, I kind of like the older version a little bit better as far as like the body and, and the printing. But I like the newer one's helmet for sure. Huh. Might have gotten a bad one, guys. Uh, it's not super surprising they've been printing hundreds and hundreds of these things. And, uh, yeah. Get a couple bad ones, I'm sure, coming through. This one. Also, the, the white. The white uh, plastic that they're using now is slightly yellowed already. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to contact Lego and say that the printing on this is really bad. See if they'll send me a new one. I'm sure they will. They're usually pretty good at that. All right, so we got our two 501st Legion troopers. We've got some battle droids. Battle droids are always pretty easy to put together. I know how to do that. Been doing it since 1999. Oh, and then my other favorite part about this set is uh, all blasters. Uh, none of the blasters are stud shooters. All the blasters are really good. Oof, love it. Absolutely love it. Let's see. I don't think any of these guys are different in any way. I think both of the battle droids are identical. Yeah, looks like it. But we do get extra arms, so you got to make sure to put the right arms on. Okay. You can always you can always use more battle droids in my opinion. Battle droids are always good to have, and then extra arms are even better to have. <laughs> in my opinion. All right, so now we're going to build our speeder bike, it looks like. We'll divide up a few of the parts here. Okay, got some skis, got some brackets, got some 
two by plates. I got a couple of one by plates. Got some jumper plates. And then uh, we do have this new piece. It's like a double wedge, double curved wedge slope. So I was kind of hoping that it was separate on the when I saw it on the box, but that is not the case. It is a single piece, which I'm kind of sad about. I really like the the new wedge slopes. They're pretty good. Looks like we've got a couple of stud shooters that go on the vehicle itself, and that I'm okay with. I'm, I'm okay with uh, a little bit of play features on the actual vehicles. I just don't like the, uh, the blasters that the guys hold being the stud shooter variety. Uh, looks like maybe all the guns come in this. Oh, nope. I just saw a couple more of these blasters on the back of the speeder bike, so I'll have to keep that in mind. All righty. So we're going to go ahead and we may as well start at the bottom. We got a two by four plate. We've got our profile bricks right there. We've got an inverted slope. Looks like we've got a couple of headlight bricks for this uh, little underside scoop detail, which is always kind of fun to, uh, to see them put little details like that on there. This piece isn't super helpful for me other than as a profile brick piece. That's the only thing I'd use it for. As a matter of fact, I think I used something similar on my uh, first, uh, first order concept speeder from Force Awakens. And I think I might swap one of these out eventually. I think it'd be a good idea. So we've got two two by plates that go on here that we can see. We can see the, the break in the plates right on that profile brick. So we'll put one of them going forward, one of them going backwards. Should be good to go like that. Now the only other question is can we see the front of this very well? Oh, the back has a really great picture. I was already pretty sure that this was going to be a really nice and and pretty laid back build uh, because the pictures that we can see here we we have some really good views of the back ends of the blast of the uh, of the ships. I was gonna say blasters because I saw another blaster right there. But yeah, it's not looking too bad. So we do need to find these pieces. These definitely go in the front. Looking for, okay, all right, got those. Got our stud shooters. And I think we used those brackets that we had, those light bluish gray brackets on the very front. And we're gonna have our stud shooters on either side. And then it really does look like we just have our skis that go on there. It also looks like they have a one by one round stud that is hollow. So we're gonna go ahead and put it together like that. It should, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks exactly like what it is. Again, this build shouldn't be that hard on the puzzle building side of it, but we'll kind of see how it goes. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'm sure I'll get stuck and be like, what the heck, how does that go together? because that is a common occurrence on a puzzle build, that's for sure. All right, so I'm seeing this guy at the very bottom with the, the new wedge piece right there. Then we've got a, hmm, I don't know what those are called. They're the seat backs right there. Now it also looks to me like it's got an, one of those uh, click hinge pieces right there. Oh, good. It's one of these. That's really good news because that means you know, I don't have to try to jumper plate the heck out of that thing. <laughs> Always a good day when you don't have to jumper plate the crud out of it. Now, I am seeing a lack of connection pieces there, but the good news is I do see an inverted slope right here. And then according to what I can see in the picture, this sits here, but up one. So that piece will definitely fit there. And then this guy fits in there. So at this point, we're just kind of guessing on the filler stuff. Is there another two by three plate? There's not. 
So the 2x3 plate that I put down here actually does go above these pieces. You can see that there's a dark bluish gray right there. So what goes underneath that part? That is the question that we must answer. So we know something has to go underneath it, but where and how and why? <laughs> These are questions that we need answered. Um, I'm tempted to do something like this for now. Just kind of hope that that's what we're supposed to do. Um, uh. I'm not really sure how you do that in the instructions. It should be interesting to look at when we're done. So two by three, awesome. And then this guy, I can see a break right at the front and that looks like it's right on top of the click hinge that we make the break, just like that. We've got a one by two tile that sits on there and then shield piece, boom. Then it looks like we've got a couple of two by two jumpers in a row. And then we get some big stuff here. So I'm seeing this one is definitely the full piece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least. Yep, yep, definitely seeing that. And that overhangs, that's that. If you guys have watched my videos, other videos, you know that the uh, the overlaying of of plates and bricks, just like you'd build bricks on a house, it's kind of, it's pretty much the same principle. You always want to make sure you're trying to follow that. I'm going to build the front of this first, I think, just to kind of use up some of these pieces so they're not crowding my field of vision on here. All right, so we get this guy on. That was pretty easy. Not a big issue. We're going to put our handlebar on, which is a new design for the handlebars. I'm always used to the droid arms being the handlebars along with the uh, whatever these things are called. The taps. I think that's what they're in uh, stud.io. Call them taps. Used to these being connected with droid arms, but you know what? These actually don't look too bad. They're a little big. So that's why I kind of like using the droid arm still on all my vehicles that I do. But that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right. So we've got a few more places we're going to have to kind of mess around. I'm looking back here to see if there's some stuff. It looks like one of my 1x4 plates sits right there. Oh, it does. Yeah. So we've got a 1x4 plate and two jumpers. I don't know if you saw that, but on these particular pieces, you can actually offset, you can like do a, a built-in jumper for these pieces, which I think is really cool. Uh, I've actually manipulated that on my uh, first order TIE Reaper. I, uh, I kind of messed with that, that piece doing that particular system, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm going to build these ski things first because they're kind of in the way. So, and that'll get rid of some of our pieces, which will definitely be good. So we've got this that attaches to the inside. Then it looks like we have one of these guys that attaches onto the ski. Another one by two, but it doesn't look like it has a hole. A grill. A clip for the blaster and lightsaber handle piece and then an inverted curve slope, just like that. So like, again, we're just trying to really get rid of pieces so that we know what we have to work with. So I know that certain jumper pieces don't go there, uh, stuff like that. So we build this whole assembly again, except backwards, but not upside down. And all right, that's not too bad. Get that guy on there. I guess we can do that on the other side too. Uh, a couple of times they've tried to make these a little bit thinner. Uh, I ended up having to thin them down even further than what they've done in the last few sets so that I, they could fit in my tactical command center. 
because I have a couple speeder bikes in the back of that thing. You know, as soon as I get the pieces, I'm definitely swapping them out for uh, for those brand new speeder bikes that I had on the channel a while back. Oh man, those are gorgeous. I just need more white pieces to be able to build them the same as the uh, the ones in the show. All right, I'm gonna start getting rid of a few other pieces just because we can see where they go. All right, looks like this kind of just hangs there on the back right on top of this thing. And it looks like another jumper is right behind it. And then it sits like this. Okay, and then this blue piece fits right in there. All right, now we may have to do a little bit of finagling here. Oh, that's interesting. We're getting some uh, some interesting pieces going on here. I think, so that's one of those new pieces. What about underneath? I think there's another one right there. So a one by two here, a modified piece there, and a modified piece here. That's definitely built up properly. And then we're gonna have this guy here with a blue one by two and this curve slope. This is like the, the seat rest. So the, it looks like this sits right here. So we just got to figure out how to fill in these five long spaces here. Okay. Well, and this also goes on here. Let's see if we can figure out how far up it needs to be built. Uh, let's see. So if this is sitting up, we are one full stud away. And we are more studs away somewhere else. <laughs> okay. Uh, these guys have to fit on here at some point. And those are just going on the inside. We can actually stick this on here like this and probably be in good shape. I don't think it'll mess it up too much to have the uh, axle piece going through. It is a five wide, so that tells me that these little bushings go in to make up the difference uh, because the, the axle definitely doesn't stick outside of these. And if we put them all together, maybe we can actually visually sight where these pieces might go. Kind of play with it a little bit. I'm not sure if it sits down there. Yeah. All right. So definitely some play time to be worked with. Um, we've got these. We've got this. This actually could be important. I think, I think it goes there. And then maybe a couple of these one by twos go here. And then we have our top part there. So we know it goes like this. Again, running into this issue of what goes here. Hmm. I'm really I'm running running out of parts here. So we know we've got a few of these jumpers that are going to go on, and then we're gonna have some pieces that make the difference there. Hmm. Oh, we got a clue. It's a Oh man, it looks like a dark blue gray piece. That can't be right. I'm out of dark blue gray pieces. There's one up here, one down there. Huh. That is very interesting. Where are they getting the pieces for this? All right, let's uh, let's tie these on because we need four jumpers worth going back. Then. I wonder if this actually goes on the bottom in here. Hmm. Could. Uh, looks like I need a brick separator. Always keep a spare. I'm going to stick this underneath here just to see what happens. Huh. You know what? I wonder. That would go like that. We can uh, take this off. 
and then this would just slide in. I don't know. I'm making it up as I go. That's puzzle building. <laughs> yeah, that, that feels a little bit better. And then that guy sits on there, and now we just got to fill in these spaces. And that doesn't make any sense at all because I have to get this assembly in there. Okay. All right. Let's see. Could it just go, just slide in, I guess? Could. Um, actually, that looks about accurate according to the, the thing. So it looks like it's almost lined up with that blue, the, the blue plate line there. So I think we're going to go ahead and put that right where it goes. All right, so that, that's a clue. That's a clue right there. Uh, we're gonna put this guy on. Oh, look at that. Look at that, we're making progress. These two guys, this guy, and there, just like that. Look at that, we've got a speeder bike and only a couple of embarrassing leftover parts. <laughs> Oh, that's actually a lot of extra parts that came in that bag. I mean, this one by two definitely goes somewhere. I'm just not entirely sure where it where it would need to be because uh, everything else is on. I'm not seeing any gaps. I'm not seeing any uh, any places that this would really need to go. Yeah, everything's really set up like quite well. Alrighty, well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, leave it at that point. We've got bag number one done. Check that out. And bag number two apparently is where we're going to get our super sweet jet trooper, which I am super stoked for. All right. Uh, and the reason I'm excited for the jet trooper is because of the blue jet pack that he comes with. <laughs> Cannot even tell you how exciting that is. All right. All right, let's check these pants and see if I'm right. Oh, man. It's almost like the white is like a faded yellow white. I don't... To be honest, I've seen a lot of these things come through and just be really poor quality lately. Oh, so here's the Jet Trooper. Are his legs different? Let's check the different legs. Nope, legs are all the same. So we're good there. We'll get our last 501st Trooper in play. We've got a couple blasters for these guys. I should have one that's a sniper and then one that's just a blaster. The sniper is a regular blaster. It just has a... Uh, oh, no, it's not. It's one of the long blasters with the little candle piece extension on it. Wow, that's massive. Oh man, after all that talk about the jetpack, and I forgot to put the jetpack on the guy. How silly of me. That's a bright blue jetpack, and I love it. I love every second of it. Oof, that's pretty. I find I like the molded parts of the dual molded parts better than the printed parts lately. And his head barely clears the, the tip of the jetpack. Woo! It's, it's pretty close, but you made it. Good job. Good job, Lego. Now, unfortunately, uh, the one part that I'm kind of cheating on is the feet because I've actually seen how this is built because I used the same feet on my all-terrain assault walker, my final order walker. So I kind of cheated on that. I didn't know I was going to be puzzle building, to be fair. Um, I think there's just a little bit you wouldn't be able to get, but I think most of it you'd be able to look at it and look really close and be able to see it. So I don't think it's, I don't think it'd be that difficult to figure out. I know I'm not really having to try very hard, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, let's see if we can see. All right, so I've got some blue, so we're definitely using the blue brackets. We've got some blue there. Ooh, I cannot see what's underneath the toe here. I don't know if it's it's another blue jumper or not. Let's see how many blue jumpers we have. If we have four, we know it's one of those. If we don't, then we know it's a different color. Why can I only find one? That's not good. Oh, there's the other one. So we only have one, which means the one goes up here. 
and the other down here. Then we've got our curved slopes also on the feet with upper brackets, one by one upper brackets. Boom, just like that. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh man, guys. For those of you who have seen the last episode of The Mandalorian, are you just going crazy or what? I totally am. It's, uh, wow. If you're looking for a finale that's going to leave you leave you speechless and, and staring at your screen, that's definitely one that's going to do it. Uh, oh. Uh, if you are in the habit of turning it off once the credits start, uh, just as a, a little hint, don't turn it off when the credits start. I usually was. I actually wouldn't sit through the credits most of the time. Uh, but I was just so shocked and I was still thinking and I was talking to some people about it while the uh, credits rolled in the background and... I was very glad that uh, I went against my normal routine and did not turn off the whole thing. Oh, man. For those of you who have seen it, I'm sure you're sitting there like, wow, you you really do? You don't watch, listen to all the music and watch through the whole thing? <laughs> no. No, I don't. Uh, I almost did not get to see that cool thing that they included at the end, which was pretty neat, I must say. All right. So here we go. We've got our blue one on the back. We've got our gray one. I know this is kind of repetitive, but, you know, sometimes that's what Lego does. I actually got the Tentive 4 recently, which is pretty exciting. And I built it up, and there are so many parts that are repetitive, but not exactly the same. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you can make mistakes because you, you've already built that thing so many different times. You're like, oh, I've, I've built this. I know how it works. But if you aren't paying attention, they actually do use different parts, sometimes different colors, sometimes entirely different parts. Always pay attention when you're using the instructions so you don't miss anything. Now, I am definitely going to miss things because I'm not using instructions. <laughs> All right, so I'm looking for a clip. One by one clip. Ah, oh, look at that. It's hiding. Got him. Got him. Sorry if I sound a little weird sometimes. I'm actually stretching up and looking at the the camera to make sure it's still recording. <laughs> Has a bad habit of just turning off on me suddenly. So, got to keep an eye on it. All right, so we've got our legs... And our feet started doing really good so far. Got a couple of feet. Mr. Feet, Mr. Bob A. Feet. All right, so here we go. We've got, it looks like a grill piece, a slope grill piece, a jumper, and a disc all coming together on the next one. So if we hold it like this, we've got our bracket it's a one by two downer with the one by four on the downside we're gonna put a grill oh blue grill and then a jumper and then a dish and then another one of our uh, sloped grills right there it's looking pretty good not too shabby so far, but then again, we are dealing with some of the easier stuff. When we get to the top with the uh, with the actual seat placement on the walker, that's when we're going to start to feel the crunch. So, and uh, like I've said before, you know, just getting stuff out of the way so we know that we don't need to use that part there. All right, now I think we're at a point where we're going to have to start... Uh, really looking at this and really trying to figure it out. So I'm seeing some upper brackets. I'm seeing possibly two right next to each other. And they're blue, so we know it's these guys. All right. Should be one more. Yep. All right. We got it. All right. So these guys are for strength. 
and they usually sit right up at the front. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. They're going to sit right up at the front. We're going to have... Ooh, looks like we possibly need a 1x4 with two of these downer brackets on it. We're definitely going to need something off the back. Is that is that our attachment point? You know what? I would hazard a guess that it's going to be, but these are pretty high up. There might be something else. I've also got this little picture here that we can kind of use to try to figure it out as well. The hinge placement. It looks like it is... Mm, that's actually looking pretty hard to figure out. Um, so I'm what I'm seeing is this. We definitely have this and this and this and this. So it's really just going to be about figuring out which pieces we use for the spacers. I think that's where we're going to struggle a little bit. I'm also trying to see between these if there are pieces. And there's definitely a 2x2 two two round plate in dark bluish gray right in the middle. And that's probably going to be structural. I'm guessing, yep, we're going to have an axle going through it. Man, I could have swore that was a... Uh... Oh, is that light bluish gray? Okay. All right, well, that's fine. We can do that. Um, pop that in. Then this definitely looks like it goes here. And then we have this guy. It's going to sit here. But I'm seeing a couple of headlight bricks, I think, on the back end that it goes through. Perfect. Yep. And then this goes on. All right. Looks like we do have a bracket that's going to pop in through here. Ooh. Some of those are actually quite hard on your fingers. And I work construction. <laughs> And I'm complaining about Lego on my fingers. All right, looking good. Yeah, it looks like this just sits here. It doesn't look like it attaches to anything. So we'll find out later if that's the truth, but that's definitely what it appears to be. All right, now I believe there are more brackets. And do they really go like this? Oh, they do. I think that's where that back dish actually attaches. Boom, boom. All right, so that means our click hinges go on the lower end. Sweet. It's always fun when you figure out little stuff like that and go, aha, I found you. You know exactly where you're supposed to go. So yeah, all this, that's, you know, this base wasn't as bad as I expected. I expected this to be one of the slightly more difficult parts because there weren't a lot of pictures of it but this is actually uh, it's actually kind of turning out so it looks like a couple of these guys need to be used as spacers to block out that axle piece and that'll make that neck nice and sturdy that's one thing about the custom kit Brickstow ATRTs is that they are a little bit squirrely around the neck section been brainstorming a little bit trying to figure out if there's something I can do to make it better but haven't landed on anything solid yet I'll definitely let you guys know when I do okay now we should be able to get some good hints of what's here all right so definitely that guy going on here now for the dishes I would imagine they're probably just gonna have some one by ones that go behind the dish We've got our dishes here. Uh, this is going to be interesting because these are definitely going to have to have something behind them. And there's only a couple of these 2x2 two two dishes, so we know we don't put another dish behind it. This is a definite quality candidate for that. Would they do that with just one of these guys? It's possible. Well, it fits. Just because it fits doesn't mean that's where it goes. Definitely have learned that over the puzzle building years. <laughs> All right. All right, so these clips definitely go back on both sides. Definitely carry through. We could try to build the front. 
What do you guys think? Should we try that? Ooh, I just saw a hint. This hinge plate, this hinge brick is actually facing this direction. So that's going to be very a very big get for us. Okay. So I'm seeing a couple things that I'd like to take care of right away. I'd like to get that hinge put together. And it should be blue, right? According to what we're seeing on the picture. Ah, yep, right there. We pop that in. Get a couple of these flag attachments. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, we're good. And they go this way. I'm building the upper section. For those of you who got confused for a second. Like I did. All right, and there's where one of our stickers will go. Not sure if I'm going to put the stickers on, but they're nice stickers. So maybe I will. All right, so that guy's on the front. Then to build this, we need the flag pieces and a one by two plate. All right, flag attachments, one by two plate. Then a two by two tile and a double cheese wedge. Then behind that, I see blue. I want it to be this. That's what I really want it to be. And then behind that is our little attachment point for our forward blaster, which we'll put together just real quick. This one's a pretty simple one. It's another stud shooter. Um, this one can actually turn and rotate so you can get a little bit better shot at your guys or however you're playing. But eh, there's a little bit of finagling that's going on. All right, we've got a lot of these brackets. Oh, another one of those. Where would that go? All right, under this guy's seat, I'm seeing that. Is that what I'm seeing? All right. There were a couple of tricks beforehand that you could use to figure out if it was these. Uh, it's some kind of a jumper. And this definitely appears to be the case. Now, how the, pro, the question is, how far forward does it sit? Where does it sit? Whew. All right, let's get some pieces out of the way again. Just so we feel a little bit of accomplishment, we're going to build just the antennas on the back. So these two guys come out. We've got a 1x4 and a 6 long bar. Sorry, it's not a 1x4. <laughs> Mixing up my words a little bit. But that's all right. All right. Get our antenna going. Hooks onto one of these. And it has a blue grill on top of it. Underneath that, we have a fairly long piece. Like that. Okay. Now, it looks to me like our little backrest piece sits right on top of that. And then this piece sits right on top of that. Okay. Now we're moving. Now we're moving along. Now, I'm going to build the the connectors on the back because I've, I'm going to have to start doing some filler stuff and I don't want to accidentally use a piece as a filler that I need right now for this. Okay. I saw a clue just for a second that this guy sits right here. And the clue was just where it sits in relation to this but then how it sits underneath that blue piece, which if you've got a downer bracket right there, it has to go right under it. So that's good. We're, we're moving that along. Very cool, very cool. So we'll put another bracket on and our clip for the other side. One by two, and then a couple of grills. Just add a little bit of greebly detail. And then we can probably put this guy on. I think we've got all the pieces that go under it. Yep. So then we just need to figure out what goes here. Now, according to the picture, it looks like it's a bracket. We can see just a hint of a bracket 
right at the bottom of that. So we definitely know it's there. And that is a one by two piece. Whoa. Sorry if that uh, got misaligned a little bit, guys. <laughs> so that's a one by two underneath this. That's, that's a really good find. That's a really good get. And then above that, oh, that might be our two by four piece. Okay. Okay. I get you. I get you. All right. So right at the top, we can see a, a, a wedge. Oh, look at that. I love these printed, printed cheese wedges, dude. These things are like 40 cents on BrickLink. I love them. So that goes on top of a blue bracket, which if it follows through has to go on another bracket here and then goes on this bracket here. So now we have our spacing, which is really good. We've got, got some really good spacing figured out here. And then this angle piece, I don't think it sits right there. I think it's a cheese wedge. So I think this guy sits here and cheese wedge underneath it. Oh yeah, that geometry looks really good. That, that, looks, that looks almost perfect. And then we've got our other flags that we can stick on. So I do have a space right there, which I could fill with a one by two, but I really wanna make sure that that's right where it goes. And I'm not 100% confident just yet. And this guy I think is gonna be what attaches to our handlebar. So we're gonna set that down right there. Now it looks like we have an extra one of these guys. Where would that go? Unless I didn't put it on the, oh yeah, I didn't put it on the other leg. See, that's why you try to build it. Always pay attention. All right, so uh, these guys hold that bracket in. We can probably pop those off for just a second. Pop in the bracket. All right, now this guy, I'm pretty sure goes back here because it's just a support. Pop this back on for a minute. So we've got a full gap going up. Ooh, where does that piece go? All right, I think I see it right there. Oh, it's a stopper for the flags. Okay. Now the question is the height. You, you can see just a slight rounding on a piece right there, and that is exactly where that piece wants to go. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out our height on that piece and the handlebar. Man, I'm seeing a I'm seeing that tile right there. Okay. I think this tile goes here. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Tile here. This guy here. Then this guy here. And did that give us our full space? It did. Look at that. Okay. So as far as puzzle build goes, I think I'd say this is a solid uh, as far as difficulty, maybe like a three. It's not very difficult at all. It's been a very straightforward build. I just have a couple pieces that just uh, don't quite line up. Uh, got some gaps. Okay. Yeah. There's that one gap right here and I have a one by two left. I'm just going to stick it in there. Very cool. All right. Look at that guys. We are bounty hunters. All right. Not too shabby. Way to go guys. We got it. So the five of first battle pack. All right. Is it worth $30? Let's go ahead and take a look at everything we get in the set. We get six minifigures. On average, that's about four bucks a fig. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Five bucks a fig. I can do math. I actually got this for $24 off of Amazon. So, yeah, I, I got a better deal. <laughs> Oh, you know what? We've got a lot of, we've got a ton of these. Where do these go? I bet these go somewhere. Um, but yeah, the 
as far as value with the minifigs and the builds, I think I think this is actually worth I uh, I don't love paying $30 for it, but I wouldn't feel ripped off. Uh, even if it's just for these guys. I mean, I've, I do have the one bad print on the legs that I'm going to have to get taken care of. But everything else I think was really good looking. Everything else was lined up. Nothing else was fuzzy or misaligned, which is great. Um, you know, 30 bucks isn't a terrible price to pay. Uh, that's the usual. Uh, and, hey, I don't say that very much. I don't say that very often that, hey, you know what? Go ahead and pay full price for this. If you can find it for full price anyway. It's definitely not an easy one to get. A lot of people around me are selling it on Facebook for like 40, 45. One guy's trying to sell it for 50. I'm like, nope, I'll just wait until it's back in stock because it, it will go back in stock, guys. Like they will never not print this while it still sells. Like if it's still selling right crazy, yeah, they're they're going to keep printing. Eventually everybody will be able to get some, so that'll be good. All right. Uh, so the speeder bike is way oversized. The RATRT is way oversized. Uh, this sniper rifle is way oversized. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, these are these will actually look really good. I'm I'm quite impressed. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't love playing thirty dollars for it. If you can get it for cheaper, then it's great. If you can't get it for less than forty or forty-five, I, I'd probably just wait until they come back in stock. Because they will. Uh, stuff like this, when it's just a production run and everybody loves it so much that they just can't keep it in stock, they always come back in stock eventually. And pretty much anybody who wants one is going to be able to get one. Uh, if you want four, you'll be able to get four. If you want 20, you'll probably be able to get 20 at some point. It's just keeping an eye on it. Uh, sometimes they're on Amazon. If you want to join some of the Lego groups on Facebook, they actually go through and occasionally will post... Whenever there's a, a sale or whenever stuff goes up, uh, they'll jump on there and be like, "Hey, you know, go we uh, we got this stuff in stock on Amazon. Order it while you can." So, I definitely recommend joining some of those groups so you can get that bonus. That's how I got my Bespin Duel, and how I didn't get my Nebulon B. <laughs> Thanks, Lego. <laughs> Alrighty, well. I think that's it. I still can't quite figure out where these are supposed to go. You guys see any open holes somewhere where these guys are supposed to be like hanging out? I'm just going to take a minute and, and go through this real quick, okay? Because these definitely came in the second bin. So it definitely goes in here. But where? Like, I'm looking around. I'm Oh! Oh! Oh, I bet they go right here. Boom, like that. Yep, that's it, guys. That's it. It's, it looked slightly misaligned before. And then the addition of these two little light pieces. Pop it out, just perfect. Wow, look at that. Yay, we figured it out. <laughs> uh, it's also really worth it if you want these blasters. You, so you got one rifle and then just a bunch of uh, regular blasters. Five regular blasters and one long rifle. Dang, dude, that's that's money right there. Those are really those are really good. The exclusive jetpack trooper is really great. I'm mean, uh, you know what this this set is pretty good, pretty good. I uh, again, unless you have to have it for a present for like Christmas or the hol or any other holiday where you give presents that are coming up, maybe a birthday or something. Unless you have to have it for one of those, I'd wait until they're back in stock and pay the 30 bucks i think that's a great deal um honestly i think the ahsoka set probably should have been 30 bucks too uh, i'm not entirely sure why it's so much more expensive but uh but then, there you go all right well thanks for checking it out guys i know this has been a, a little bit longer video but i wanted to give you the full experience of a puzzle build from start to finish it's been a lot of fun so and uh i hope you are having a I hope you had a great holiday, uh, depending on whatever holiday you you celebrate. We celebrate Christmas in my house, so for everybody else who's also celebrating that, I hope you had a great one. And uh, everybody else, I hope you had a great, great time too, so.
All right. We will catch you guys next time in TJ's Legroom. And until then, play well. Bye.